Hello, welcome, welcome. How much is too much listening in English? And how much listening should you be doing in order to become fluent? This is our topic today. I'm Tanya. I'm the lead teacher here at English Coach 3Ts. And I want to answer these questions along with any other questions you might have about listening in English. What is the best way? How can I listen so that I am learning the most effective way? And those kind of things. So I'm going to make sure my camera is there. Sorry for that. A little black out there. Um, I want to just tell you a little bit about me and ask you to introduce yourself. Hi, Luis. Great to see you. So if you're listening live, let me know in the comments that you can see on the side of your screen. If you're listening live, if you're listening to the recording, you can see those comments when you make your image a little smaller on your screen. And let us know where you're listening from, or you can tell me in the comments. So I am here in Southern California. I live in the mountains in Southern California in the United States. I'm from the United States. I was born in Colorado and I've lived in nine of the United States. And now I am an English teacher. I teach women how to become fluent and be happy with their English. And of course, I have men and women as students. But if you've heard about my women's fluency program, she speaks you know that that is one of the main things that I do. However, I have other teachers that work for me. You may have seen Tiana here on our YouTube channel or over on Instagram. And if you're not following us on Instagram, you're going to want to do that for a little bit of a different kind of English learning. So let's start talking a little bit about listening in English and how this can help you to become fluent and while I'm doing this, start thinking of your questions because one of the best parts of being live is that you can ask your questions and I can answer them for you right here while we're talking. So, Emmanuel, I see you say, I'm happy to see you, dear teacher. I hope you're doing well. Thank you, Emmanuel. I'm doing very well. Thank you. And who else is listening? Let us know in the comments. Oksana, it's good to see you too. It's been a while since I've been live. I've changed my live schedule, but you can find me here live on YouTube on the last Saturday of every month at 1 p.m. Los Angeles, California time, which is right now if you're here live. So, Listening is a big part of learning to become fluent. Listening and being able to understand is very important. And I would say it is one of the biggest parts of our practice routine. And what I mean by that is we want to take time regularly. For me, it's every day. Um, for you, that might be different. But I listen to my second language every day. Now, if I can't, if there's a day I can't listen, that's okay. My goal is six days a week, but I enjoy it so much that I do it seven days a week. And occasionally I have a day where I skip. It's unusual for me because there are so many things I enjoy doing in my second language. And that's what I hope to help you create for your English learning because listening is going to help you to learn more vocabulary and to learn grammar. So I want you to think about that. Would you rather study grammar or study vocabulary lists or listen to things you enjoy listening to? Let me know which one you would rather do. Would you rather listen and learn in an organic or a natural way? Or would you rather study lists? There are people, of course, who would rather study. Espy, come here. 
So Espy and Pippa have been a little noisy today. If you hear them in the background, that's why. Olga, welcome. Great to see you. All right. So I'd love to hear from you. Which would you rather do, listen or study? So you might ask me, how can listening make me learn grammar or vocabulary? I have to study to do that. So let me tell you a little bit about that. One of the keys to listening so that you will learn vocabulary and grammar is to listen to things you understand. You want to listen to things where you understand most of what the person is saying. If you don't understand every single word, that's okay, but you want to understand most of what they're saying, maybe 95% or more of what they're saying. There are a lot of reasons why this works, but I'm going to help you to understand the basics of why this works. Welcome, welcome everyone who's joining us. It's so great to see you here. Louise says, it's good to see you again. Excuse me, I had some problems with the audio. I hope you can hear me now. Is everyone able to hear me now? Who's listening? I see hearts. Oh, I see lots of hearts. So it looks like you all are able to hear me, which is good. So as you're listening to me right now, can you understand most of what I'm saying, some of what I'm saying, or a little bit of what I'm saying? Write in the chat for me. Do you understand most, some, or a little of what I'm saying. I'd like to know because that will help me to know which words to choose when I'm speaking and how fast to, to speak. So Luis says he can hear me now. This is good. So you want to understand most or all of what you're listening to because then your brain is engaged in what you're listening to. Your brain is active in what you are listening to. Okay. Ofa says he completely understands. Rita says some. Rose says most. Eunice says 90%. This is very, very good. Welcome from Turkey. Paola says most. This is excellent. So if you understand some of what I am saying, this is okay. And you also want to look for videos where you understand more of what the person is saying because your brain is taking in those words and it's telling your brain these are important to remember. When your brain hears a word over and over and over, your brain will remember that word. You don't have to tell your brain to remember that word. You can, of course, but just by listening, your brain is remembering that word. Now, when you understand most of what someone is saying or a lot of what someone is saying, I said, you're going to learn vocabulary and grammar. So I want to know, do you believe me? So I want you to write in the chat, I believe you, I believe you. When I understand most of it, I believe you, I am learning grammar and vocabulary. Or I want to believe you, I don't quite believe you, but I want to believe you. Or you're full of it. <laughs> this means I don't believe you. Now, this is not a phrase you would normally say to your teacher. It's okay to say it here because I told you you can, but this phrase usually is not very polite. However, in the United States, we use this phrase a lot with friends when we're joking with each other or when we want to be less formal, more playful, in a more light way of saying it. So do you believe me that you are learning grammar? and vocab vocabulary when you're listening to things where you understand most. Put your answer in the comments. All right. Uh, Rose says, only with you. I think she means I believe you, but only with you. 
Um, Rita says, oh, she understands more. Very good. Louise says, sometimes I may understand more or less. This is good. This is good. Um, I can't read this other word name that I think might be in Russian or Ukrainian. It says maybe had a ton. I'm not sure. Says most. Let me know. Do you believe me? The reason I'm asking you this is because one of the reasons people don't learn vocabulary and grammar from listening is they don't believe it's possible. And so they aren't listening as much as they could. So that brings me to the question, how much should you listen? My simple, easy answer for you would be listen to as much comprehensible input as you can. Comprehensible input is things you're listening to that you understand. Uh, Espy wants this little treat that I have for her here. That's why she's on the screen here. Um, so if you understand something, listen to that and do that as often as you can. Now, the exception to that, the only reason you wouldn't want to do that is if that is keeping you from speaking. So in other words, if you listen a lot and you have the opportunity to speak to somebody, speak to them. You also need to speak. So if you're listening so much that you're never speaking, that's the only time I would say you're listening too much. Really, you can't listen too much unless it is keeping you from other things. Then, of course, it's too much. All right. Ufa says, while listening, I try to take notes of words I meet newly. So I easily remember and also learn the words I listen. This is a great idea. We call this scratching is one way you can refer to this or taking notes. When you're listening and taking notes, you are basically sending a message to your brain. This is important. I need to remember it. And you're using more of your senses. You're listening but you're also writing, which is movement of your hand. We know that when we move our hands and we're doing something, we're signaling to our brain to remember. And also that movement, for some people, that is a really great way to learn. Then you also can review it, which is another great thing for learning. Louise says, the connections are important when you learn new words. Absolutely. Listen to things you are interested in. If you're listening and you're bored, then you are possibly learning, but not as much as you could if it is interesting to you or you are enjoying it in some way. Another thing you can do is to listen and do something else like do the dishes, do some work in your yard, take a walk. These are all things that can help you to be more interested, but also moving your body will help you to remember things. Um, Eunice says, I want to be the best non-native English speaker there ever is. Okay, so just being here is helping you to learn. And this is a great goal, Eunice, to be the best that you can be. You can say to be the best there is, however you want to uh, word that so that you have something to work towards can also be very helpful. Okay, I want to be sure and look at my list of questions I want to be sure to answer. And if you have a question, be sure to put it in the chat or in the comments. Why does listening work? Listening to English helps you to learn English because your brain will remember things it uses. So when you're listening, your brain knows I need to remember this. It is as if it is building a like a base or a foundation for learning new things. And so every time you use a word, it helps your brain to remember it. And so your brain doesn't have to work so hard to remember words you already know. It doesn't have to work so hard to remember words that you have just started learning. And this is going to help you to become more fluent. 
Um, I talked a little bit about what comprehensible input is, but this is very important because it will help you to find things you understand on the internet. Um, this is a word that's used a lot uh, in this day and age, nowadays. Um, my stories that I have here on YouTube are all geared towards, meaning that I create them for intermediate and above learners. So if you are an intermediate English learner, you're going to understand most of the stories that I'm telling. And I try to make them on different topics and different subjects, different ideas, and different things you might be able to relate to. So this is another important thing is that relating to it or feeling like you connect to it is also really helpful. All right. Rita says, I notice I understand British English better than American. As for black set slang, 20%. Yes, the different accents and the different slang, the differences in slang, I should say, will change how much you can understand. And if you want to understand more American English, listen to more American English and you will little by little start understanding it as much as other accents. Um Let's see. Ufa says, listening again and again works. It helps me with new words. Yes. Listening to something more than once will help you. And in fact, if you understand some or a little more than some of what I'm saying today, then this is the perfect thing for you to listen to again. Even if you understand most of it, listening to it again is helpful. And especially if you're trying to think of new ways to listen, then listen again so you get these ideas again. Uh, Luis says, should we learn complex words that we don't use frequently? This is a great question. It depends on whether or not that's something you enjoy. If you're like me and you love vocabulary, you love language, you love words, then yes, do that. If this is something that makes you feel heavy or bored or frustrated or confused, I would say do that less. If you have to do it, for instance, if you need to do it for a class or for your job, then find ways to make that easier or lighter or more interesting. Uh, maybe you can talk to other people who understand those words or enjoy those words and ask them why, talk to them and find new ideas about them. Chat GPT is also really good for this. Um, Ufa says, listening enables me to make new connections between new things I am learning. Absolutely, absolutely. M-B-O-E-D says, how do I get fluent with phrasal verbs? Great question. Phrasal verbs, think of phrasal verbs like vocabulary. Basically, it's just vocabulary that has two or three words in a phrase, sometimes four. Um, and the same thing, if you enjoy studying them and looking them up and writing examples, these are all good things. But if you don't enjoy that, just listen more and read more things you understand. When you're listening or reading English, you are learning phrasal verbs. Again, do you believe me? <laughs> it's true. I've been learning, I've been using phrasal verbs today and I don't even know it. A native speaker cannot speak without using phrasal verbs. It's just a natural part of what we do. And so you will learn more as you hear them and your brain becomes accustomed to them or is used to them. Great question. I have quite a few uh, videos on phrasal verbs, so be sure to check those out. I'll link some in the, in the description here. I'm going to make a note for myself to do that. And while I'm doing that, I don't want to forget to tell you that next week, if you are a woman with an intermediate to advanced level of English and you would like to go live on Zoom with me, next week I have a free class for women who want to be fluent and happy with their English. So if that's you, be sure to check the link in the description when I post this video as a recording. All right, let's see. 
Eunice says, teacher, why some people say I could agree with you more instead of saying I couldn't agree with you more when this is the version that makes sense. I think it's simply a mistake. Even native speakers make this mistake. They will say, I, I, I agree with you more when they mean I couldn't agree with you more. I myself was a young adult when I started to understand that. What's the word I want to say? That construction. It's a little confusing. I couldn't agree with you more means it's impossible for me to agree with you more because I agree with you so much. But it sounds like it's the opposite. And so sometimes people make that mistake. Is It's simply a mistake. Um, yes, Ufa is answering Luis and saying it deepens the objective of language learning. Listening, I think maybe, or enjoying it. Did I miss a question from you, Luis? Let me know. Rita says, what English do you speak? With what accent? Great question, Rita. I am from the United States, so I speak American English. My accent is an American English accent. <clears throat> Pardon me. Considered sort of a neutral accent because I'm from the middle of the United States. I was born and raised in the middle of the United States. I currently live in California, so you might hear a little bit of a Western United States accent, um, but mostly I think my accent is pretty neutral. Um, are there any last questions before we wrap it up or finish today? I'm going to see if I answered all the questions on my list. As far as what should you listen to, anything you're interested in where you understand most of it. Anything you're interested in that you understand most of it is what you should listen. How should you listen? You, any way, we talked of several different ways, like doing something else, taking notes, but it is important to say that you need to pay attention to what you're listening to. There's nothing wrong with having something on in the background, but this is not going to help you to learn vocabulary and grammar. It is, there's a lot of theories on how, how that might work. I'm not going to get into all those theories right now, but in order to learn grammar and vocabulary and become more fluent, you need to listen to something you are paying attention to. You are trying to understand it. You're trying to get the message. Um, let me see. How should I listen? Why does... We talked about that. Ah, here's a question. How do I know if I'm listening enough? This depends on what you want to accomplish. This depends on your goal. If your goal is simply to listen 15 minutes three times a week, that's great. But if your goal is I want to be fluent in a short amount of time or whatever that is, then you're going to need to listen more. To become fluent, and I do this because there's many different ways to define what fluent is, but you are basically going to need to listen to 1,500 to 2,000 or more hours of English to be fluent. And so that means you need to listen a lot. You could listen to all of this in one year if you spent most of your time doing that, or you can spread it out over three, four, seven, ten years, whatever works for you. So the amount that you're listening really is about you and your goals and how you create balance with that. All right. MBO says, can I become fluent English speaker as a non-native English speaker? Yes, you can. Absolutely. English is a global language. There are many, many people who are fluent English speakers and it's not their first language. So yes, absolutely you can. All right. I think I got all the questions. If I missed your question, be sure to put it in the comments so that I can answer it there. It is one way you can easily help me to keep this channel going is to comment on the videos when you're watching them recorded and to share this video with someone you know who wants to learn English. And just as a reminder, if you are a woman who wants to be fluent and happy with your English, 
Be sure to join me next week live on Zoom for my free class. It will be at noon. That's one hour earlier than this was today. Noon, Los Angeles, California time, Saturday, February 3rd. And the link will be below this video when I post the recording. Thank you. Thank you for joining me, for interacting, for talking with me today. Best wishes on your English fluency journey. And I will see you here in another video very soon. Bye-bye.